Let's settle a debate. How important actually is the deficit? It's the big D word in government, it's the centrepiece of coalition economic policy, but does it merit being mentioned 520 times over the past five years? And is reducing the deficit the number one economic priority at the moment? Let's find out. So first of all, what is a deficit? The deficit is the amount of money the government spends each year to plug the gap between its own spending and income. So when we talk about getting the deficit down, all we mean is that we hope to borrow less money next year, and ideally not to have to do any borrowing at all. Sometimes the government earns more than it spends, and the extra money it has, excluding investment, is known as a budget surplus. As for the debt, well this is just the total amount of money we've had to borrow so far, minus any debts we've already paid off. Even when we are reducing the deficit, so long as we have a deficit, we're borrowing money and therefore adding to our total debts. You might have heard people like David Cameron saying that the government has been paying down its debts. That is wrong. While they have been reducing the deficit and trying to make the debt go up less quickly, it's still going up, and it won't go down until we have a budget surplus. This is exactly what the three main parties want to do. By 2020, they want to either achieve a budget surplus or at least eliminate the deficit and stop government debt from rising any further. The only way to even attempt to achieve this in the five-year period is by raising taxes or cutting spending. In other words, austerity. There are immediate costs to the economy when this happens, and in the last five years we've seen cuts to public services and an increase in poverty. The question is, is our debt situation serious enough that it needs immediate action? Now, some people are worried that the national debt is far too high already, and at the rate at which it's increasing, it will soon reach a tipping point where the economy will implode. First of all, there's no real evidence for this tipping point thesis, and if it was ever true for a country like Greece, it's certainly not true in the case of the UK, which, unlike Greece, has its own currency. This means that we have our own central bank to borrow from as a last resort if we have a serious debt problem, and for some of our debts, we can print more money and inflate our way out. Even if it were true that high levels of debt led to economic ruin, our debt levels are not even that high. Now, you may have seen a scary graph like this in the past, showing the size of the UK's public debt over the last century. This is not as scary as it looks. Our debts are by far the highest they have ever been, but our economy is also the biggest it's ever been. Think of it this way. You're a young worker and you earn £10 a year. At this point, you've got £1 in debts. A hundred years later, you're somehow still alive, and your debts have risen to a thousand pounds, which sounds terrifying, but put it in the context of the fact that you now earn ten thousand pounds a year, and your debts are just as manageable as they were a hundred years ago. So the important thing to look at is not so much the sheer amount of debts we owe, but the relationship between that and the size of our economy, so that we can get a sense of how manageable public debt is. Compared with the size of the economy, right now, it's still lower than it was in the 50 years between 1918 and 1969, which includes the golden era of economic stability, and it's especially lower than 1948. And let's also not forget that this was the point where the government decided not to start trying to cut spending, but instead invested in a number of minor things, including the NHS, and the welfare state, and 250,000 homes a year. I'll explain later why this worked. For now, let's address a second worry. Some people think we're going to default on our debts, but we know that that's not true either, because our borrowing costs are historically quite low. When you try to borrow money from a bank, the more they see you as a risk and as someone who might potentially fail to repay your debts, the higher an interest rate they'll demand you pay, so that the risk they take on by lending to you pays off. But the government is having no problem borrowing money at the moment. It's paying the lowest interest rate it's had to pay since the 1900s. This is the clearest indication that investors are confident in the government's ability to pay off its debts in the long term. But why on earth are they so confident? The main reason is that they expect the UK's economy to grow in the long term. Lots of people worry that even if we're not in a debt crisis now, by allowing our debt to pile up we're saddling future generations with the intolerable burden of paying it off. But the UK on average has about 15 years before it has to pay off any debts it takes on. So by the time we have to pay the debts that we've taken on this year, our economy should be much bigger. That £1 debt we took on in 1900 when we were earning £10 will be easy to pay off when we were earning £100. Indeed, we could have even borrowed double that, £2, even £3, and the difference, even though it seems big now, will be negligible in the future. This is the whole point of government borrowing. Invest in what needs investing in now, and only pay for it when we're in a position to do so. But what about the money we're wasting every year by paying out interest on our debts? It's true that we do have to spend some of our budgets each year on adding interest to the debts we've taken on. The amount that it has to pay depends on how much debt it's holding and what the rate of interest on the debts are. But once again, there's nothing unusual or urgent about where we are today. In historical terms, we're spending a fairly average amount to pay interest in our debts. 
Furthermore, if we did want to borrow more money, we wouldn't be increasing our interest payments by much because as mentioned, our borrowing costs are quite low. If there's any time that borrowing would be inconsequential, it's now. Taking everything together, our debt position is actually perfectly normal. It's not harming our economy significantly in the short term, and providing our economy keeps growing, it shouldn't harm it in the long term either. So actually, we can let our debt pile up for a long time before we have to worry about it. There's no need to reduce the deficit in the short term. But this doesn't just mean that we can push austerity cuts five years into the future. We can instead take a long-term approach to dealing with our debt situation by encouraging economic growth. I mentioned before that if you have a bigger economy, your debts are more manageable. More people are working and paying higher taxes, and the government has more money to spend on servicing its debt. Now, obviously, a debate needs to be had about how the government goes about encouraging growth, whether it's through investing in infrastructure or quantitative easing or just not cutting public services. But there are certainly ways to spend money as a government in such a way that in the long run you get back more than you spent. It can be done, and it has been done. Each place where this line slopes downwards, the UK government is growing the economy faster than the debt. One of the key dangers of an austerity programme, on the other hand, is that it weakens the country's ability to grow in the long term, and therefore weakens its long-term ability to pay off its debt. In the worst case, it can actually be counterproductive. Fewer people in well-paid jobs, fewer people paying taxes, and more people in need of welfare. In the short term, austerity can seem to be fiscally responsible, but on top of it already being something that's unpleasant to go through, in the long term, austerity can prove to be irresponsible. To sum up, the deficit isn't that important right now and our debt situation is certainly not bad enough to justify the need for austerity. On the contrary, if there was ever a time to borrow, it's now, and it might work out to be in the long run the most fiscally responsible thing to do. Let's hope that after five years we can finally move on from this debate.